Psalms 116. A psalm of thanksgiving. To God to be the glory, to be thanksgiving all the time. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. So one love that you have for God is that he hears you. He may not always say yes, but he hears you. Uh, gods can't hear you. The gods of religion we read the other night, they have ears, but they don't hear. So right away, the next psalm that we read is, we have a God that listens. So this is a contra to Psalm 115. Those idols can't hear. Because he has inclined his ear unto me. So see, he has an ear and he hears. That's not what we read in Psalm 115 for the idols. Inclined means he, 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 he bows down. He humbles himself. That's not what the idols could do. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. You're not to call upon idols. You can't worship the God of the Bible and have idols as an aid of worship. That, that's, that's a violation of what God said. If God said abomination, what part of abomination don't you understand? It's giving a new name to sin. And it's nothing new under the sun. The sorrows of death come past me. Well, I mean... All reality who really wants to die in the Old Testament they did not have the assurance that we have a Christian should long for death to go home to be with the Lord Paul says to be absent from the body be present with the Lord the Old Testament Saints were not really given that much of a revelation after life after death and if you died in sin in the Old Testament it, then you went to hell. So that's where that fear is. And the pains of hell get hold upon me. Hell has pains. Luke 11 says uh, torment. How can you party in a place where there's pain? I found trouble and sorrow. Well, that's life. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. For there is no, no other name given by whereby man must be saved. Acts 4.12 Now, the writer of the Psalms didn't call upon Jesus, but we do and did. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Calls out for salvation. It doesn't say he believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and he should be saved. Notice that. But he had to call out to God. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, O God is merciful. Our God is merciful. Mercy that he forgives your sins so you don't go to hell. Gracious that he hears you and answers. The Lord preserveth the simple. Simple. Not prideful, not foolish. Salvation is simple. You don't need to make it complicated. I was brought low, humbled, and he helped me. God will not help a prideful person. Now God may bring something in that guy's life to, to bring him low. But God's doing that out of his mercy and grace to get your attention. Then once you become low, once you become humble, now God can deal with you. And when you're brought with pride, that, that dealing with you is chastisement. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dwelt bountifully with thee. 
Again, it's counting your many blessings. Name them one by one, and it's bountiful. Much more than what we deserve. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. They knew that God would deliver them from death. God knew they knew that they would have something after death, but they didn't wasn't too sure. But they do know about a hell. They knew of the place of the penalty. And when a pastor and Christians of a church say, don't preach hell, listen, that's the one thing the Old Testament saints did know about. They did not look for heaven. They looked for the land. Abraham never looked once looked for heaven. He looked for Hebrews 11 says he looked for a city. And he's still waiting for that. And he's not going to get it to the millennium. And he's not going to get it to the new earth. Hell. H-E-L-L. -L. That is what they knew. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. All right, he's, he's given more life. Longer life. He's dried his tears. Him happiness. And kept him from stumbling. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. From death, there's life. My eyes from tears, and my feet from falling, there's the way. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Genesis 5.22 You got to walk in the Lord. You can't walk outside. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. Well, that's an interesting statement. I'll... All we've been doing, all men are liars. Jesus Christ wasn't a liar. But all men pretty much lie. Given a certain situation and put on the spot, he will lie. Sometime in his life. What shall I render unto the Lord? What shall I give unto the Lord? For all his benefits towards me. What am I going to return back to God? Listen, you talk about jobs and their benefits program. What about God? God has the ultimate benefit program. He doesn't give you life insurance. He gives you life. He doesn't give you health insurance. He'll give you a new body that will never ache and never have pain and never have sorrow. His retirement program is blown out of this world by giving you a, a golden city, a mansion, and it'll never end. You'll, it never will give up if, if, if heaven will never be bought out to another company. You don't need stocks and bonds. You need God and the Lord Jesus Christ for your interests. You put your interest in God and you wait to see what the returns come out to be. I will take the cup of salvation. Now usually a cup in the Bible is judgment, but here's a cup of salvation. Now don't go as the Roman Catholics, well, you know, if I drink this blood, you know, I'm saved. That's not what it's talking about. It doesn't say blood. It says salvation. And call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. That, that's exactly what's found in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. God ain't going to reach out to you unless you ask, seek, and knock.
Salvation is you got to come to him and you got to drink of that cup and you got to call upon the name. I said this prayer. Did you call upon the name of the Lord? I was baptized. Did you call upon Jesus Christ? I was a member of this church. Did you call upon the Son of God, which is God, and God is the Son? If you have not called upon Jesus Christ, you are not saved. And you better have the right Jesus Christ, because Paul speaks about another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. See, there are three classes of people out there. They are generally born-again Christians without a shadow of a doubt. There are people out there who think they're saved, and they're not. And Jesus said, you know, didn't we do your works and this and that? And Jesus said, very, very, I say unto you, I never knew you. But didn't we? They truly believe by what they have been told and taught to do, they're saved, and they're not. And then the third class of people, they're just outright lost. That's the three classes of people. And when you're dealing in personal work with somebody, you deal with them, find out who they prayed to. Because a Roman Catholic, and I read the other day, uh, Episcopal Indian, both claim to be born again. Now, whether that person's born again or not, I don't know. But guess what testimony? Guess what I found missing in that person's testimony? No Jesus. I don't care that person was well-liked in the world, in Hollywood. I don't care. If that person did not call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to save that person, then they're not saved. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. The Bible is right. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of his people. You ever vow anything to the Lord? Have you tried to look for a loophole or have you performed your vows? You swear to take this person to be, you know, speaking to a husband, well, a husband and wife to be, to be your awful led wife, to be your awful led husband, through death, through pain, through sorrow, and to death do your part. I do. All right, run around America and find out how many divorces are out there in the Baptist Church. Never mind the Catholics, never mind the Episcopalians, never mind the Luthers, never mind the, what about the, the Christian churches. How many people have been in war in, in uh, uh, Vietnam, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, present-day present wars, and say, Lord, if you get me out of this, and whatever it is, have they performed the vows? Someone may be in a jail. Someone may be in a hospital bed. Lord, if you get, they provide a vow. Solomon says it's better you keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So look at that one. Acts 26.10. Well, the death of his saints. So what does that imply about a saint? He's alive. And when your church calls upon dead people to be saints, uh, you're contrary to scripture. <laughs> <coughs> Pastor mentioned about a, a guy who, with a, as if he hasn't gone home yet, by Tuesday he, he he may, and that's precious in the sight of the Lord when someone comes home to be with him. He said, "Why did God take that young preacher? Why did God take that young Christian woman? Why did God take that Christian?" One of the re one of the reasons, one of the reasons, and I can give you many, and not all. One of the reasons it maybe just pleases the Lord. Maybe God just, you know what, you've you been in that, you ever read the end of Hebrews 11? And it goes through, they were in caves, they were saw the sun, and it says something near the end, it says something where the world was not worthy. 
to have them. And the Lord says, you know what? Come home. Be with me. Be with, be with the heavenly host. Stop being in pain. Stop having that church cuss you out. Stop having people spit in your face. Stop being, just come home with me. Well, let me ask you a question. What is the greatest thing to happen to you? Death and go home to be with the Lord and be present with, the, absent from the body, be present with the Lord or, or the rapture? Both. They're both equally exciting. You're both going to see the Lord. You know, there's a religion out there that teaches if you don't kill and shed blood, their God ain't happy with you. So what happens when that person dies? Oh, you didn't do enough. You didn't sell enough magazines. You didn't pedal your bike enough. You ought to go through more bicycle tires than what you did or whatever. How about you're just a, a, a Christian that does nothing and, and then you die and go, go home to the Lord? I mean, is that precious to the Lord? I mean, do you please God? <clears throat> oh, Lord, truly I am thy servant. Can you say that? A servant is a verb. He said, no, it's a noun. No, a servant is a verb because he does things. I am thy servant. Says it twice. And the son of thy handmaid. And thou hast loosed my bonds. Taking the chains off. I'm set free. And when I'm set free, I am thy servant. How do you like that? I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. For what? Being set free. For calling upon you and I don't have to go to hell no more. For you answering me. For you not being like those stupid idols, those stupid statues we read about the other night. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. How many times has that shown up? Three times. There's a name to call upon and it's not Mary. Mary is not the name of the Lord. Gabriel. Michael is not the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord. Well, here we go again. Now in the presence of all his people. Again, that's twice. That's very important. It's recorded twice. How many people just don't realize? Lost people. They haven't been in the church. They, they don't know nothing. What about a Christian who's been in the church? Maybe a preacher doesn't preach it. That they don't realize that all the vows they made in their life, they're going to have to be held accountable. What's another vow? What's another vow outside of the marriage vow? I will pay off this debt until it's completely paid off. Sign my name, John H. Hancock. I'm sorry to say I have been, I have not fulfilled those vows in my life. And they're under the blood. That's a vow. And I'm ashamed to say that I have not fulfilled that vow in my life. How about when you first get a job? You're in the office. They hired you. I'll do my best. I'll do my greatest. And then five hours, I mean five months down the road, you slack off. You don't give it its all. God opens up the book and says, oh, yeah, February 15th. Wow, oh, yeah, look at that big mouth. Look what he said. June 9th. Wow, that's not what he said he was going to do, is it? That was a vow. 
I'll tell you another one. Now this was I don't know if they do that do this today, but they did it when my when my parents were dating and those kind of things going on when I was in school. You know, you have a girlfriend in school and you say, True love forever. That was a vow. I don't care what you call it. I don't care if you if you departed from each other and you went on your own separate lives. That was a vow that God heard and recorded your life. And we just can keep on going with your big mouth and your signature for things that you said you will do or things you signed your name to. And you're going to have to give an account. In the courts of the Lord's house, and that's the temple. How do you know Psalms 116 is not for us? Can we get into an airplane and go to the courts of the Lord's house? No, not there. You go over there with the dumb of the rock. I don't want to be there. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, old Jerusalem, okay. That's not there today. Praise you the Lord. A Jew can't go there today and do that. Psalm 116, 19. He'd go over there and miss a Jerusalem go, and there he is at the dumb of the rock. Well, you wait to the millennium. After when, when, when that temple was built back again, and they see the Antichrist sitting there. Oh, you better believe when the Lord comes for them in the second advent and brings them into that land and sets up that land for that, you guarantee they'll be praising the Lord for a thousand years and when we get into eternity. You know, Rachel told us that in Children's Church yesterday that they learned about the prodigal son. What is so interesting about that story of the prodigal son at the end of that book, end of that chapter? Find me where the party ended. Yeah, he pulls the father, he pulls the son off the side. Father, you don't get me, you don't get me. He can move me, he had me, 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 me. Yeah. And the party is still going on, and the part, and the father eventually turns away. Goes right back to the sun. Hey, hey. The party never ended. Praise God. We're going to get the glory one day in our rejoicing and our fellowship and our testimony to Jesus Christ and the worship of Jesus Christ will never end. And that's going to break my stride. I'll, I'll tell you the honest truth. For whatever reason, I don't like singing. I just don't like it. And I'm one of those ones that count how many stanzas there are and stuff like that. And uh, I just don't like singing. When I get the glory, I'm going to love it. And wait till you are in the courts of New Jerusalem. There's no courts there. Oh, but there's mansions. There's a street, there are gates, and wait till you see everyone, everyone, the entire world population, as in Adam and Eve before Genesis 3, were worshiping God. And you don't, worry, you don't need to worry about Genesis 3 because the serpent is put into the lake of fire. That, that testimony of Adam and Eve being with the garden in, in God's garden and being in fellowship with God that will keep on going for the rest of your life. From Genesis 3 to Revelation 21 to well, Revelation 20 is wiped out. You say, what do you mean? The Bible? No, not the Bible. Eternity wipes out Genesis 3 to Revelation 20. There'll be no sin, there'll be no adultery, there'll be no robbery, there'll be no murder, there'll be no crime, there'll be no pain, there'll be no leprosy, there'll be no destruction of, of the nation Israel, there'll be no Babylon, there'll be no images, there'll be no more burning your children, there'll be no more. Just holiness, righteousness, and at the end of this verse, about Thanksgiving, we'll be having Thanksgiving every day, by the way, not just one time a year. Matter of fact, there's no years, you can't measure years. One thing in eternity is you'll be praising ye the Lord. Now, 
If heaven is for everybody, do you think an atheist would be happy to praise you, the Lord? Honestly. Do you think God will allow a man who did not want to believe on God, who did not want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, do you think God will allow him to come in and praise the Lord? No. He didn't want to. You think somebody will want to praise anybody else but the Lord, any other human but Jesus Christ? You think they'll be happy in heaven? Then don't come up with this universal, everybody will go to heaven in the end. Don't come up with that. Because we're going to be praising ye the Lord. We're not going to praise famous preachers. Matter of fact, we're all going to look like Jesus Christ. I don't know if we're going to be able to tell each other from each other. There'll be no birthmarks. You can't go, hey, that's my, that's my wife and that's my spouse because they got that weird birthmark. No, 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 no. The only one that has the marks is Jesus Christ. And that's the one who gets praise ye the Lord. This whole psalm is about thanksgiving. All that God, God has taken us out of hell. God has given us benefits. God wants us to pay our vows because he does not want us to suffer loss. Of crowns and rewards so we can get the full potential of all the benefits and the full potential of praise you the Lord now what do you do when you go to heaven you're a Christian and you ain't got no crowns to throw back at Jesus what do you do then I've always wondered that Imagine somebody in a church, they've been in their church their whole life, and they've got crowns, and they look at their pastor in heaven, and he ain't got one crown. <laughs> How about that pastor ridiculed that person? He's foolish doing stuff like that. Woo, 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 woo. And you're up in glory. Crown him. Crown him. Here you go, Lord. What about you? I don't know if it's going to be like that. What about you? I like what uh, brother Mc, I think Brother McDonald said. It'd be one when we get to heaven and everybody crashes their crown at Jesus Christ and you got the automatic bowling machine. Here it comes back. You put it back in your head, you throw it back down at Jesus and it comes right back. Oh come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Isn't that what they do at the at the military and at the colleges? Everybody throws their hat up and they go look for the hat that has their name in it? Wouldn't it be stupid you go to this big graduation? I mean college. I mean, you paid for it. You went to the college, and, and you worked hard. You got the diploma. Everybody's about to throw their hat up, and you forgot to bring yours. What about if you go into the one of the armed services, and you went through boot camp, and you passed through, you got through it harder than that, and the military didn't give you a hat to throw. Everybody else, they gave one. Feel kind of stupid. There's your family out there in the bleachers, the other one. Hey, that's my. Well, how do you know where your son is? He's the one without the hat. And why doesn't he have a hat? I don't know. Why doesn't he? How about that? But no matter what, praise ye the Lord forever in glory. Praise you. What are you what are we going to do in heaven? We're we gonna sit down at a table and eat? I don't know. Are we gonna know our loved ones? I don't know. How big's my mansion? I don't know. What do you know? I know praise you the Lord. I know we're gonna to sing to the Lord, I know we're gonna worship the Lord Jesus Christ as he ought to be worshipped. And there will be some people, I don't want to do that. Well, there's another place for you. I call the question anybody who doesn't worship the Lord and call to be a Christian because that's what you're going to do. That's the benefits he's giving you.
You ain't. Know, it said. It's uh, where is it? It says, "Precious is precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints." But let's look at the other thing. You wake up in the next day, a brand new day. Oh, the Lord didn't call me home. Must not be precious. Yeah, but He's giving you opportunity to tell someone about His Son and for them to get saved, for you to earn a crown. How about that? Isn't that a wonderful benefit? I guarantee you, as pastor spoke about that, that evangelist, I guarantee you, that guy is going to be loaded. Hey, we better call that guy home because we can't fit one more crown on his head. We're going to have to give him a double head. I, I, I'm, being, I'm being here. We're going to have to give him two heads just to put the crowns on his head. I'm saying that in, in humor. Because today, you know what? A lot of Christians are headless. They are crownless. And they're going to get to heaven, and their worship service is not going to be me, myself, and I. They won't find the songs that are in their church. They won't find the songs that are in their hymnal or their CD case. There's not going to be posters of their singers up on the walls. We'll get up there and we'll sing to the precious land, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son. Crown him with many crowns. Amazing grace. How great thou art. And just keep on naming him. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art how great thou art, then sings my soul, 